there's something happening now, and it's happening right now, and it's happening around the globe. It's irreversible. Right now, the number of people aged 65 and older is growing faster than any time ever before. And that is unsustainable. It is unsustainable in certain societies and economies as it stands at this moment in time. We need to find new ways of managing that. This longer life is going to have an impact right round on every society, every economy, in terms of healthcare, in terms of education, in terms of where we live and how we live. We need to find new ways to manage that. Most of our support systems as they're de developed today are of a different age. They cannot sustain this. We need to look at different ways to actually support people going forward. As it stands at the moment, people consider that we should work into our early 20s. And from our 20s right through to 65, we're productive and busy bees. At 65, we then enter a period of leisure a.k.a. retirement, and we're, we're, we play some golf, have some relaxing time, and 10 or 15 years after that, we fall asleep one night and don't wake up. Is that really reality? That's the way our systems are currently structured. Today, people want to change that opportunity of learning, productivity, leisure, at different times throughout their life, and mix it and match it right up into their 80s and their 90s, and far be beyond. So now imagine this as a global, this global challenge as a local opportunity. What if mum, dad, loved ones could be supported by friends and families in environments that could support them to be as what they want to be and enjoy life as much as they want to? What if we had more integrated community services? that provide a better quality of service of life, or of quality of services? What if we had better home design and neighborhood design that provide a better quality of environment? What if age-friendly technology supported all that? And what if we could empower older people to be more cognizant of their own health and well-being going forward? We like to refer to this as enhancing longer living in smarter places. This is Great Northern Haven. It's a purpose-built demonstration unit of 16 apartments in Dundalk. 15 of the apartments are lived in by older people. They range in ages from 60s into the late 80s. And they've been living there since June 2010. The 16th apartment is kept as a demonstration unit. And in there, we undertake transitional care as well. So we're moving older people from high dependency care units out back and into their homes. And we run different projects in that environment. Here's some views of Great Northern Haven. This is it from the front. It's a three-story building, A2 class rated energy building high sustainability and adaptability throughout the different designs of the building. It has an east-south facades so that the sun rises on one side and sets on the other side. The balconies are set in a common garden out the back and they get the most of the sun from late afternoon right into the evening. They're also an area where the older people can congregate safely. The part, that back, back part is gated. We put in raised flower beds in the back so that people could access and gain access to the plants. They turned them into horticulture classes. They plant strawberries, plant potatoes and different things and actually built different courses in around that. The actual units themselves are open kitchen living spaces, very light. The units are all adaptable in terms of their height and profile and size. You have sinks that move up and down. You have hobs that move up and down dependent on the person that needs to live in there in that environment. Throughout the building, there's a whole series of different sensors and technologies and other technologies that we'll talk about in a few moments. Easy access to the back. 
all under floor heating and energy. Walk-in bathrooms with handrails and all the other adaptabilities and assistive technology uh, anchor points already set in without the building, providing easy access to adapt the building over time. So this is Great Northern Haven. This is a planned view of it in, in a 3D view. So what we have is over here is the main, bath, uh, main bedroom with an ensuite. This is a second bedroom. This is the kitchen living area and a common area in terms of access into the actual apartment. Throughout this apartment, each, uh, each apartment has over 100 sensors of varying types. Every window, every door has a sensor on it. We monitor electricity at every 15 seconds. We have sensors on hot water and on water usage itself. We have motion detection sensors throughout the whole building and at different points and at different accesses. We measure light levels to see the impact of light over periods of time. We have temperature sensors throughout every single room. Everybody has a smart TV and they utilize it. Some of our residents actually serenade each other from the different balconies using the, their, their smart TVs. Perry Como on YouTube, look it up, it's pretty good. They also utilize touchscreen devices and touchscreen devices has become a big part of their application and their use of technology throughout, the, throughout, the, throughout the, all the apartments their iPads. Every, data, every switch is a data point to us. They can be reprogrammed or repurposed as we require, but they also record data every time they're turned on and turned off. The whole system and the house is linked into social alarm systems. So if there's an alert, it can be sent to the social alarm system and transported to a call center 90 kilometers away and somebody can respond to that immediately. Every resident utilizes their iPad to record biometric and, vi uh, and vital signs data. That information is sent up into our systems and feedback is given and provided to the individuals themselves as well. Our transition unit is utilized, as I said, for high dependency care. These are people that have been discharged from hospital who have just had a series of different falls. And in here, we operate as, uh, they come in and live in the, in the unit for five days and they wear a whole series of different sensors and technologies. You'll see Microsoft Connect devices sitting back here, which is looking at falls and the tendencies to falls. And then they're sent home with a series of different technologies that can support them to live at home. Had that not been the case, we could be talking about residential care, or, or, or worse, still remaining in acute care. And the cost of that as distinct as living in home care. Technology, iPads. The concept and the stereotypical position of older people and technologies, it's gone, forget about it, okay? So these people here utilize the iPad. Within two weeks, they were teaching the researchers how to use the iPads and that they found these new things and different things. One of these gentlemen here for the first time was able to Skype his son in Australia. There was tears at that event, just understanding that basic technology and the opportunity in around that and what they could actually achieve with it. So we have all this data. In fact, we have 10 million records of data coming from 2,240 sensors throughout the, the apartments. What do we start to do with that data? What can we start to learn about it? So we set up different visualizations in terms of that. So this is looking at the daily patterns, of da uh, uh, daily patterns in terms of a daily routines. So we can see here each one of the days and each one of the patterns over those periods of time. We see times when they're in the living room. We see times when they're in their bedroom. And we can see times when they're outside the home in the different opportunities in relation to that. And this starts to give us information and feedback in terms of how that person is living. Is, are they up and moving around? Can we send an alert to the family to say that everything is fine and mum's up and no problems there? Then how do we look at patterns of change over periods of time? So we use these spiral plots. This is midnight, this is midday. And each circle here is, is is a day. So we can very quickly start to see patterns building up over those periods of time. This person, pretty regular, going to bed before 12 o'clock every single night, pretty regular getting up at before eight, you know, eight o'clock, before nine o'clock in, in, in the morning. You know, they're getting up to go to the toilet or go to the kitchen to get a drink of water actively during the night time. We can see that they have a regular period of actually going out of the house, and it's usually between 10 o'clock and, and two, three o'clock in the afternoon which is quite common for a lot of older people. So the data starts to feed us back in terms of what the actual routines of those, those individuals are. 
So how can we start to plot this in different ways? So here's two plot, uh, spiral plots. This is time outside the house. So on the left-hand side, we have a person that is, you know, likes to go to the pub, obviously, stays out quite late in the evening, goes away for holidays for periods of time, is out, out of the home, is up quite regularly in terms of, uh, 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 goes out regularly in the morning and stays out for quite a bit of the day. So they're an active individual. Over here on the other side is an inactive individual. We can see from the data that they do not leave the house except for certain periods of the time. Other than that, they don't leave the house at all. Ground tube data that's ga gathered on a continuous basis here actually points and tells us this person has depression. So the data starts to point to the fact that this person has depression, and that gives us an opportunity for early interventions into that person's life and, and possibly to have more positive impacts in their life. This design here was co-designed and created with the older people themselves. They worked on this design, they created it. This actually provides a petal feedback in terms of how their sleep is. Red is bad, green is good. How is their mood? You know, how, how are they doing in terms of falls? How their social activity? This could be blood pressure, this could be weight and all the other different things. Co-design is a big part of, of everything that we've been doing in there. We've worked with the older people themselves in terms of how we design applications, and particularly on the iPad and some of the smart, appli smart TV applications as well. We have a bit of fun doing this as well. This is BBC coming up to record some of our residents. So it's not all just technologies and research. It's particularly not just technology. This is Patrick, 70 plus years of age, young should I say, and this is his life, and it's a real life. He lives in this home. How can we as a society, and how can we as, as, as people in the community support Patrick living in his house for as long as possible? So we see this in, in three aspects. There's community environment and technology. This is not just about technologies. You need these three elements working together to actually provide supports to an individual. In community, we have lots of active projects going on in the wider region in the northeast of Ireland. This is our men's sheds. We operate four men's sheds, where men come into these environments for, for the day, painting, woodworking, fixing bikes, having a chat, playing a bit of pool, whatever it is. It's an environment in which they will actually come into. Us men, by the way, as we get older, are not too good at community. communication. Women are much better, apparently. This is our Good Morning Loud service. We have regular phone calls to older people in the community, advising them on things that may be happening in their community, advising them on different advices or supports that can, come in, can be provided, and then providing some feedback mechanisms to them if, uh, if they don't use technologies or other things. And this has become quite highly successful, and, and our residents and uh, participants in the community really like it. We also operate a, a program called Nestling Group, Nestling Group is two coordinators, an ex-community nurse and an ex-policeman. They have 70 volunteers, and those 70 volunteers look after 600 people in the community. And they organize social events, and they organize day trips, and they have, you know, every six weeks, the men come to meet the women and the other bits and pieces. They don't mingle too much in between. The men hold their meetings in the local army barracks and talk about teas, coffees, guns, planes, tranks, and different things, whilst the women have different activities and other things going on. But these are vital gaps that have been filled in in terms of what's actually available out there and what they're, what's not provided. So the continuum of care goes all the way to nursing homes, and there is a place for nursing homes in terms of this, but it should be at the very top end of high dependency requirement as, we, as prior to uh, you know, different requirements in terms of person's health and well-being. So we've worked on programs called like Places to Flourish, which works with nursing homes to make those environments much more homely. Why can't they be much more homely? Why can't the older person live in an environment that looks a bit more like home as they end up in a nursing home? Louth was the first age-friendly county. It was established in uh, 2008 and is part of the WHO program. This Age County program seeks to work with stakeholders and county managers and all the other uh, people in the community to set out strategic plans working with older people as to what the requirements are in their community and their area. This Age Friendly program has now gone national. It is now across 16 counties in Ireland 
and the, the other counties are planning to take it up over the next two years, and I believe Cork is one of those. At the end of the day, this is about connections. This is about the connections that can be made between the individuals. You know, we have individual responsibilities, but collective responsibilities as well. How can we create those connections between the person at the centre, their family members, the community, the public and the private services? In these days and ages, we find the private services and public services are contracting in different ways. How can we fill those gaps with the communities and the other elements? This is what enhancing longer living about sm in smarter places is about. Not just technology, but technology is an enabler here. Technology can create the connections. So we're asking people to come share the journey or start the journey in their own communities. Thank you very much.